So what do you get if you combine this? With some of these. Seven hundred and sixty-eight gigabytes of DDR4 and this add in three months and this is how I broke a computing world record. What's your minimum specification? So I know what you're already asking, Ian, Ian, Ian. What the hell is a computing world record? We have supercomputers that run Linpack, and you measure that in gigaflops, teraflops, petaflops, exaflops. So what the hell is a computing world record? And how did you get one? On standard hardware. Well, one of the interesting things about this community we're in is that they're driven by mathematics. Mathematics is an important part of designing a CPU. And what a lot of these CPUs go into is just doing basic math, whether that's video encoding, whether that's CAD, whether that's playing games. It's just maths, 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 maths. So, Jesus, I'm out of breath. That thing is heavy. Oh, anyway. Computing world records in this instance. Um, you may have heard that calculating pi to millions and billions and trillions of decimal places is in itself a record. Last year, Google, for Pi Day, uh, engineered some of their Google Cloud platform services to calculate pi to 31.4 trillion decimal places. Later that year, Timothy Mulliken, who currently holds a world record, managed to get 50 trillion digits of pi in Ivy Bridge level hardware. Super old hardware, but he still managed to get a record on a consumer grade system. How? Why? What does this mean? So the tool I'm going to be talking about today is one called Ycruncher. It's made by Alexander Yi, who's currently a financial analyst in a firm in Chicago. But since high school days, he has been writing programs to calculate the digits of mathematical constants. His Ycruncher program, which is over a decade in the making and runs to half a million lines of code, is able to calculate many of the most important mathematical constants to essentially almost any level of precision. Now, the main factors that determine how precise you can calculate one of these constants uh, depends on, as you might expect, the compute capacity. Uh, but now we're getting into a state where we're calculating so many digits of pi or so many digits of e that you have to be able to reserve that amount of memory or that amount of hard drive space in order to do so. These calculations go on for millions and billions and trillions of terms that you know multiplied or added or divided together. And those terms have to be kept in memory somewhere. Now, in my system, I said I had 768 gigabytes of memory. Some of these calculations could easily run into the hundreds of terabytes of memory, and that's where all those SATA drives come in. With a standard program, if you exceed the memory limits of the system, the uh, operating system will create what's called a page file on your storage drives and use that as an extra scratch pad for DRAM. What Ycruncher is able to do is it pre-creates that page file if you don't have enough memory for the calculation. And it will automatically manage the data transfer in and out of that page file. And that page file can be split across multiple storage drives. So if you're doing a calculation that needs 10 terabytes of memory for the calculation, but you only have, say, 120 gigabytes of memory in your system, if you can provision another 10 terabytes of storage for that calculation, the data will move very quickly from the storage to the CPU as it needs to be calculated. Now, as a result, these type calculations end up having two types of bottlenecks, CPU and memory. CPU is a standard one. Uh, these calculations, they are fully multi-threaded. They can take advantage of you know, 16, 32, 64, 128 threads. Uh, I think somebody even has some of the records on a 200 thread system. 
it scales that well, but the, you have to be able to feed the, it's what we call feed the beast. You have to bring in uh, data from memory into the CPU. Now, if you compare moving data from DRAM to CPU, that's fairly quick, but moving data from storage to DRAM to CPU is very slow. What ends up becoming the main bottleneck in a lot of these uh, advanced type calculations is actually how fast you can move from storage to DRAM to CPU. So it becomes a very much a storage bandwidth based bottleneck. So a modern CPU, you might be able to transfer data at say 200 gigabytes per second from memory to CPU, but your storage, if you're on say 10 SATA drives might peak out at five gigabytes per second. Um, and there becomes a very distinct imbalance. And we see that with some of the Pi calculations. Um, so Google's Pi calculation spent only 12% of the time on the CPU. The other 88% of the time was spent in storage. Uh, and they were using SSDs in the cloud over an iSCSI network. Um, Timothy Mulliken with his 50 trillion uh, digit calculation, he used a bunch of mechanical drives uh, but because he was using ivory bridge level hardware, he ended up being on the CPU about 45 to 50% of the time, but he was still very much storage bottlenecked. So in order to get these uh, calculations today, to get some of these records today, you need lots and lots of fast storage, preferably NVMe storage, alongside the very fast CPU. Now the record I achieved was what was called the euler mascheroni constant. Little known constant, but it's still part of the record tables as maintained on numberworld.org slash Um And I calculated it to 600 billion and 100 decimal places. What I actually did is I provided the verification run for somebody else's compute. Now you could think, well, okay, let's do, let's calculate the golden ratio to 10 trillion places. Do that calculation. Okay, submit it. Okay, it may be a record. But how do you verify it? In most of these calculations, you have to have a standard run using one algorithm and a verification run using another. A ver verification run is sometimes often slower because it's using a slightly slower algorithm. But the idea is that if you have two uh, calculations for the same constant using two different mathematical methods to get there, and they both have the same hash and they both have the same digits, then that calculation is considered accurate. Pi is a special case in that regard because there is an algorithm for you to be able to calculate specific digits, even to the trillions of digits, um, in a matter of days rather than weeks and months. Um, so if if you've done your Pi calculation, you know, and you've output all your digits, and you want to verify that the last fifty digits are the same, um, are accurate, then there is algorithms to specifically go for those digits without having to calculate the rest of the constant. So a Korean fellow called Sung Min Kim reached out to me in order to do a verification run for his computational run. He had already done the computational run. It had taken him 145 days on some old hardware with 128 gigabytes of memory. And because I already held a few records at the time, uh, based on some of the compute systems I have here in my office using uh, Xeons and Epics and you know, memory and storage and what have you, he asked if I would do the verification run for him. Now, the euler mascheroni constant is a bit different to most of the constants calculated because it has very high demands on memory requirements. A lot of these constants have a degree of complexity associated with them. So where uh, square root of two is, has a complexity of about 1.4, uh, pi has a complexity of five, euler mascheroni has a, a has a difficulty rating essentially of anywhere from 350 to 500 depending on which algorithm you're using. This means it has very high demands on storage and on memory and you essentially have to do a lot more work to get your digits out of this particular constant. Now I set my system up which was a single uh, Xeon Platinum 8280 um, running at stock speeds uh, in a um, ASUS ROG Dominus Extreme, uh, the LGA3647 platform designed for the W3175X. Uh, I added in uh, eight sticks of 128 gigabyte uh, DDR4-2066 LR DIMMs. So the, these are these. The, these can run about four grand a piece when they came out. You can get them for about one grand a piece now. Um, I'm lucky enough to, you know, Micron actually sampled me a while ago with some of the some of this memory. Um, Place it in a system with a standard graphics card, some extreme cooling, 
1600 watt power supply and the uh, Anidase Crystal XL uh, system uh, case that you saw at the beginning of the video. I put this system together thinking, oh, you know, this calculation, it'll be done in a few weeks. Um, little did I know it would go on for quite a while. Storage, uh, Micron sent me a bunch of two terabyte drives recently, so I linked them together. Um, SATA drives, not NVMe drives, NVMe would be ideal. Um, this calculation needed about eight terabytes of storage. Um, so what I did, so even though I had eight drives, I could only put six together because the uh, the chipset on that motherboard only supports six drives. Ideally, in this situation, you want identical bandwidth across all drives to get the best performance. Uh, so, you know, I put it on, I left it for about, I don't know, 10, 12 days to begin with. And I was keeping track of uh, what point in the calculation it was. And I was doing lots of fancy graphs. Um, and then at one point, uh the system just kind of slowed to a halt i couldn't open the start menu anymore um so i essentially had to close the calculation restart the machine and boot it up now why cruncher is fantastic at doing things like this because it self checkpoints a lot of times throughout the calculation so uh when you if you're doing a big calculation like this if you have to reset the os for whatever reason uh, you lose, you know, a few days, maybe a week's worth of work at once. Now, because we're very early in the calculation, uh, I only lost a few hours, actually. Um, I ended up having to do this about six or seven times throughout the length of the calculation, uh, just because Windows being Windows. Now, technically, Windows is actually the faster system for this um, over Linux, but for whatever reason... I mean, I, I kept my system off the internal network. I tried to disturb it as little as possible. I was just, you know, keeping a check up on it on a, a few days. And eventually it finished. So glad when it finished. Because I had this system that was essentially running a 1600 watt power supply with a 205 watt TDP CPU and lots of memory going for... My official time was 104 days. Um, so I was really glad it was over. Now, you can ask, well, why did you pick that system? Now, as I said, this system I put together very quickly. Um, I was just thinking it wasn't going to take that long. Uh, I initially wanted to use the W3175X. That's 28 cores, and that's a much higher frequency than the 8280. I mean, it's a bit higher TDP, but I, yeah, with the extra frequency, I thought it would have helped. Unfortunately, even though it was in the uh, Dominus Extreme, it doesn't support LR DIMMs. So the most amount of memory I could put in it was 128 gigabytes. Now, with this, uh, these sorts of calculations, if you can increase the amount of memory in the system, you're decreasing you know, the amount of the transfer between the storage and the DRAM. So you're removing that, you're making that bottleneck less of an effect. Um, ideally, I would like six terabytes of Optane, right? But Intel hasn't sampled that, unfortunately, not to any reviewers for in-hand use anyway. That's why I went with the 8280, because it was the highest core count. I perhaps should have used something more like the 6226R because um, I actually got sampled one of those during the calculation. Uh, that probably would have sped it up. Um, I could have shut the system down, changed the CPU and put it back in and Y Cruncher would have worked and it would have just been fine. Um, unfortunately, I didn't think of that. In the future, um, when I'm going for these records, you know, I have a checklist of things that I'd ideally like to have. Um, so... Uh, Alex, the developer of Cruncher, he's actually done a Zen 2 optimized version now. Um, so running on 64 cores of Zen 2 versus, say, 28 cores of AVX512 on the Xeon. It's a bit give and take whether one would be better than the other. What AMD has going for it is the uh, higher memory support, you know, unless you can get hold of Optane for the Xeons. Um, so, yeah, given the fact that I have, you know, access to a couple of terabytes of memory, um, having 128 cores, 256 threads of Epic uh, with two terabytes of memory uh, would be ideal. Now, the problem becomes with the storage. Um, as I said, some of these calculations, you know, maybe a couple of terabytes of storage would be fine, but if you're actually going for some of the big records, especially the Pi World record, you're going to need anywhere from about 400 terabytes of storage. That's in order to take care of the calculation, but also the output, because the output runs into tens of terabytes when you're calculating 50 trillion digits of pi. Um, 
unfortunately i haven't been able to find a storage vendor who's happy to lend me that much storage um one of the things that this calculation does is it actually puts a lot of stress on the storage so a standard consumer sata drive um might be rated for say 700 terabytes written over the course of its lifetime um, this simple euler mascheroni constant actually did two petabytes of writes on these on these drives on these micron drives um but because i had six of them you know it, i think it averaged out about uh, 250 terabytes written per drive so the drives are still well within their warranty i mean they, they are a bit used but uh, they're still got, you know, full speed and I fully expect them to go you know, beyond their warranty. But this sort of calculation really puts pressure on the amount of terabytes written to the drives. Um, this is where having more memory come in and the more memory you can have uh, in your system actually helps a lot with these records. I think most of the records now, unless you're willing to actually set up a system to run for a year and you have, you know, like multiple 14 terabyte mechanical hard drives, it's pretty expensive for somebody trying to go for these records casually i mean three or four years ago i think um some of these records would have been able to get a lot easier like i said uh timothy mullican with 50 trillion digits of pi he did it with um, a quad socket ivy bridge system i believe and then he also had the best part of 64 terabyte drives to get his calculation which he had in his server room and that run for over 300 days he got the record it just took him a year and then verification because Pi is the is the easiest one to verify. Uh, that only took a few days. Now, okay, so I have this record. It's one of the number of calculation records I have. Um, will Guinness World Records send me a certificate saying that I've got one record? No. The only constant they really care about is Pi. Um, unfortunately, that's the one that requires a lot of kit. Um, it can require a lot of expenditure. Um, I believe I have, I, I can work out the best way to deliver that record. Um, it's just a case of getting hardware together. And at the minute, nobody wants to play ball. Um, there is the added fact that Ycrunch isn't a free program. If you want to use it for commercial purposes, for example, getting a record, there is uh, the purchase of a license that's required. So when uh, Google got the record, uh, they had a license, they promoted it, they spread far and wide, BBC, New York Times, uh, they presented it at their own conference um, to show the power of Google Cloud Platform. Uh, whereas when uh, this latest record, this 50 trillion digits of Pi record came about, there was almost next to no mainstream uh, media coverage about it. Um, just because it was you know, some guy doing it in his spare time who had access to a bunch of hardware that could do it. T to me, personally honest, I'd love to have on my you know lifetime CV, you know, Pi world record holder at some point. So if you think, uh, if, if you're from a storage company and that's the sort of thing you would be interested in, please get in touch. Um, either that or I'm going to have to poke Linus and do some sort of collaboration with him. We'll see. So thank you for watching Tech Tech Potato. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, let me know if you like this content. Let me know if you dislike this content. Uh, there's comments below and I tend to read all of them as well. So click here for the bell to get more videos. And uh, what's your minimum specification? Well, two epics and two terabytes of memory, really.